So we're in Hamaspeak of the Hashem, chapter 1. Um, and on page 4, Bazaar the Jim. And we mentioned that the most important part is knowing. Yeah, very good. Page 4. Knowing the mitzvot. Knowing. You cannot be a, a, a yerechet. You cannot be a person who fears Hashem as a relationship with God if you don't know what He wants from you. It would be the equivalent of saying, you know what, I'm going to go shopping for my wife, but you don't buy anything that she gave you on the list. Of course you went shopping. Yeah, of course you brought it back for your wife, but she didn't ask for any of this. She sent you a store to buy milk, you buy her cheese. The cheese comes from milk. Yeah. yeah, but it's not milk. She wanted milk, not cheese. So to know... Torah means that you're able to have a relationship with God. If you don't know Torah, you cannot have a relationship with God. Now you have to understand that this is totally Rambam. Along come the Hasidim 300 years ago. Every fool who doesn't know how to read, and doesn't know how to write, and doesn't know how to think, and doesn't know how to pray, doesn't know how to... Hashem, he could be even a bigger tzaddik than Moshe Rabbeinu. I'm exaggerating. Obviously not all the Hasidim believe such things. But the stories you hear from that period is like the simple Jew, you know, the one who didn't know. Now it's okay. We love the Jews who don't know. We love them. Right. Pasha the Yid. Very good. We love those Jews. But we're not going to sell it to you that that's the ideal for being a Jewish. It's much better to be an educated Jew. In the simplicities also, I'm going to say for the Hasidim, it's only good. Sometimes we get so intellectual so in our brain, eh, maybe we don't really believe in Hashem, but we start to get like very too smart for ourselves. That's also a bad thing. So a simple Jew would be like the one with simple. I believe in a no, no games. No, I believe in the mitzvah. No stories, no stories, no nothing. That's good. That part of the simple Jew I like. Doesn't argue with himself. Right, but the uneducated part, the the ignoramus part, we're not proud of that. And then here we're gonna have a few terms, and these terms are good to know. You see where we are on page four? If one knows. Yeah, then the next page. If one knows. Uvachen, and therefore, im if one knows who, mashu mechuyav la'asod ve'osehu, if one knows my responsibilities, what does Hashem ask from me? And He does them. Zeholech b'derech hayashar. He is walking on the straight path, on the straight road. Asher natan lefanenu Hashem mitalel lalechet ba. That Hashem gave us to walk on. So let's say the Torah says keep kosher, I keep kosher. The Torah says keep Shabbat, I keep Shabbat. The person who does what it says in the Torah, he's walking on the straight road with Hashem. And now he's going to tell us there are two roads. There's the road that everyone has to do. What does everyone have to keep? Which means what? Kosher, Shabbat, Tefillin, Tzitzit, Mezuzah. Uh, this, the, everyone has to do this. Now, the common road. Right, the common road. Now, it could be there are extra stringencies. But those are already not the common road. That's already a different road. So now, let's talk about the common road. Misha Holech Beder Ha'am. Somebody who goes on the road of the people. The common road. Bikyum HaMitzvot, when it comes to perform mitzvot, Nikra, he's called Tzadik, a righteous person. Vetam, and a, a, he writes complete, but it's more like an innocent person, a pure person. Viyashar, and a straight person. Vesar Mera, and one who leaves evil. Uvishon Chachamim, and the words that our rabbis refer to him, if you look in the Gemara, the word they call such a person, is a kasher. What does kasher mean? Kosher, that's what it means. What does it mean, kasher? In regard to food, it means like fit for consumption. You could eat it, right? Here it means like a, like a, a good person. It's a kosher business deal, you know we say that? He's a kosher Jew, very good. Kesher, very good. Kesher means closeness, but it's a different spelling. And here maybe is the right place to say that our rabbis have many halachot. Let's say in the laws of Yichud. You know Yichud? A very important halachot that not just Jews should know, but the whole world should know. A man is never allowed to be alone with a woman in the same room, with the door closed, with 
the door locked, whatever it is that the situation is, or even in a secluded place that other people are not going to come to, a man is not allowed to be, or a woman is also not allowed to be in that situation. Oh, very good. After the chuba, they, they go into the yichud room. The bride and the groom go there to do yichud, to show that now we're married, now we're allowed to be in a room alone with each other. And by the way, if people kept this halakha, a lot less problems would happen in the world. All the time, you got a CEO of this company and his secretary. If they knew that a secretary would never come into a person's office and the door was never closed, never would be a problem. I mean, it could be other problems, of course, but these are simple ways to keep a person away from a villa. When, when you tell a person, sorry, I'd only shake my wife's hand, but it sounds, maybe you're a silly person. Yeah, but if you only shake your wife's hand, the chances of you touching somebody who's not your wife, it's going to be very rare. And so here you have kasher in the laws of Yichud. The question is, what if you have two men and one woman? Or two women and one man? Normally when there's a third person around, people are not so quick to do averot. They won't do something wrong if there's a third person around. There's a witness around. Right. So now it's no longer discreet, it's no longer confidential. Says Shulchan Aruch, this all depends if they are kasher or not. Are they kosher Jews or are they not? Meaning, there are people who, we live in a crazy world. Yeah, go ahead, what do I care? Those people, they're not kasherim. If they're not trusted when it comes to relationships, so it doesn't help that the third person's there. If anything, the third person might be a bad influence. And so the Shulchan says you always have to determine the people you are with, are they kasherim? Are they uh, uh, kosher people? Are they not? It's a important thing in general. You go to someone's house for Shabbat and say, ask. You're allowed to ask. I know it's rude in America. But the Shulchan Aruch says in the laws of Der Heretz, Nikiyei Hadat Birushanaim, those who were of clean minds in Jerusalem, like the Tzadikim. Before they would go to a wedding or bar mitzvah or to a meal at somebody's house, Hayu Shalim, they would ask, who's eating there with me? Who did you invite also? I don't want to come to a meal and, and all these people that are not kosher are going to be there. It's okay if you want to do a meal for them, but I don't want to, I don't want to bring my kids to such a place. It's Shabbat where the brother who's the criminal got out of jail for Shabbat. Wonderful, he's your brother. You can have him at your Shabbat table. But I don't want to bring my kids to that Shabbat table. You know you have a guest who, you have to, whatever, whatever reason, it, come, it curses a lot. You don't have to be there. There are people who come and you know them. They come, all they talk about is dirty things. So you know, those people, I don't want to come when they're there. You go to a wedding, you know, this wedding, there's going to be all kinds of bad things happening in the wedding. I don't have to be there. Oh, maybe they're going to get offended if I don't come. Maybe. I'm offended that they're having that kind of wedding. What do you mean? Only they're allowed to be offended? I'm offended that you're inviting me to a wedding where that's what you're going to do at the wedding. Mixed dancing happens at a wedding. I always walk out. Someone says, oh, Rabbi, it's not so nice. They invited you. You came. I said, what do you want me to do? I want to go dance with them? What do you want me to do? I'm walking out because it's offending me. It's offending me that you invited me to a place and I don't feel comfortable. It's like inviting your vegan friend to a steakhouse. It's offensive. He doesn't eat meat. So this is called a kasher. Now these might seem like, whoa, so if you keep the Torah, now you become a righteous person? Those of you who learn Kabbalah, you'll know that tzaddik is a whole different department. But in the world of halakha, tzaddik is anybody who keeps Torah mitzvah. A righteous person is one who follows the Torah. What about a righteous person who does something wrong? Let's say he keeps 90% of the Torah. Is he righteous? It's trying to mean it's not that he says I don't believe in ten percent. He just he slips up. Right? He says the shonara sometimes, or uh, he turns on the light back into his house, or whatever. I mean, it's not intentional. He's trying as hard as possible to be righteous. Well, it's righteous it's the Rambam says, listen to the Rambam. Not here. This is the Rambam's son. The Rambam says, what is the definition? There are three terms in Jewish law. A rasha, you know what I'm talking about? An evil person. The opposite extreme is a tzaddik, righteous person, and the middle is benoni. Benoni means like a middle guy, like a neutral pirate guy. Now in Hasidic philosophy, these words have very different meanings. The Rambam writes, a tzaddik 
is somebody who does good and bad. Because it says, En Sadiq Ba'aretz Asher Yasetov, Velo Yechita. There's no righteous person in the world who does good, only good. Every righteous person also does bad. Of course. But so what is a tzaddik? Is somebody who does more? Very good. More good than bad. Do you do more good than bad? According to Halakha, you're a tzaddik. Yeah. 51, 49. Even that extreme. Now what about a rasha? So if that's true, so what's the definition of a rasha? Welcome back. What? What's the definition of a rasha? Very good. A rasha is one who does more bad than he does good. Meaning he, he also keeps kosher. I don't know. He puts on filin once a week. But he does more bad than he does good. That person is a rasha. What is a benoni? What? Right. Very good. He does 50% good, 50% bad. Now he's in trouble. What is he exactly? Rosh Hashanah, Kippur, if you look at the Rambam and the laws of Tshuva, he says people who are Benonis are in trouble. They gotta get their act together. Because one, they say one more word of Lashon Hara, they're on the other side now. They're a Rasha. They do one more mitzvah, they're, they're going this direction. But you see from here that it's not so hard to be, to be a Tzaddik. You also see it's a double-edged sword. It's also not so hard to be a rasha, to be evil. Which is why when a person gets the title of tzaddik, when we tell them, oh, that means you have to, I don't know, you, you only eat once a week and you, uh, you fly in a magic carpet on the weekends and, you know, Shabbat, you don't even move out of your chair. All these things we tell them, your beard, it grows until your ankles. Now, whatever we tell people needs to be about a tzaddik, so people don't become tzaddikim because it's so far out of my reach that I'm not even going to try. I'm just going to stay who I am. But when you teach a person, hey, to be a tzaddik is very easy. You can do it too. Oh, all of a sudden, now it's worth it to be a tzaddik. So we do ourselves actually a disservice. Don't, is there a chair around the corner behind you? Yeah? You're, we're doing a disservice to people by making a tzaddik so far. Okay, Bezat Hashem. Also, one more line. So what's the best name from all of these names? Tzaddik, we said, is a righteous person. Tam is an innocent, pure person. Yashar, on page 4 in this book. Yashar, Yashar is a straight person. The Sarmera, one who leaves evil, a kasher, a, a kosher person. Which is the best title out of all of these titles? Sadiq. Sadiq, very good. Achamufchar mikol eshemot alanu. The the best of all of these names. Who <coughs> Sadiq? The best title is one of a Sadiq. So the Baltanias definition of. Rasha Benoni, it's not in line with Rambam. Not at all. It's a whole different. Um, in the Tanya, Tzadik, Rasha Benoni, it's a whole different world. In the Rambam, it's Halachic. The Rasha, this is Tzadik, this is Benoni. Why the difference? I don't know. Probably because in Tanya it talks about souls, a different kind of Neshamot. It's and here it talks about deeds. What do they do? Right, right. Yeah. What was my last name called? A Benoni. I have a friend whose last name is Benoni. Oh, very good. But it's two words. It's Ben Oni, right? But they might write it together. But. What? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. So very good. The word Sadiq comes from which other word in Hebrew? See what's the next word? Milashon Mimilat Tzedek. From the word justice, righteousness. Asher perusha yoshe umilu yachovot, which that means somebody who does tzedek, someone who does justice. That means that he goes on a straight path and he fulfills all of his obligations. Kikiyum hamitzvot vachiyuviot hu chov shanu chavim lo itane. This is what the Rabbi Avraham says. The fact that we do mitzvot, those are obligations we owe Hashem. It's like we owe Hashem debt, we pay it back by doing these mitzvot. Just like a slave must listen to everything that his master tells him. 
And when we say these terms, we're, uh, who has slaves, who has masters? And practically, at work, there's a CEO, there's a boss, there's a manager, whoever is on the top of you. Right, now it's a little bit less extreme. So okay, so you don't want to listen, so you get fired. Fine. But that's a big deal. I mean, you have to listen to what you're told. You see this the most, perhaps, not in the workplace, but let's say in the military, or in um, police, or in all places where there's a chain of command. Where even if you know you're right, you listen. I'm listening. Because not listening is a bigger crime than the other way around. Now there's a flaw in that system. The flaw in that system is you're listening to human beings. I was just in a car now with a police officer. I was not arrested, don't worry. I was just <laughs> driving around with a police officer. And he told me... What? A ride along? A ri- yeah, something like that. I, I got stuck on the freeway in New York. They had to tow me off the side of the road. And something very interesting he told me was... People... They start off with a police officer. I don't know what, they, where they, what the title is. But then they get ranked up and up and up. He said, all of a sudden, the guy who was on top of you was talking down to you and cursing at you and screaming at you and writing reports on you. He said, but he was once just like me. He knows what it's like to have that. So why does he keep doing it? Why that attitude? He didn't like it when they did it to him. So why is he doing it to somebody else? It's a flaw in this kind of system. You go to the Israeli army. You're 18 years old. Your commander is how old? 19 years old. So you have to now listen to some 19 year old? When I got stuck in America with my, all my army stuff uh, four years ago, whenever it was, and I called in, so I, I need to speak to the officer who's the head of the officers of all the officers who make the decision. I call him up, we're talking on the phone, how old are you? I'm 22. Is there anybody on top of you? No. <laughs> You're the head of the whole department? Yes. Anyway, anyone who believes the state of Israel doesn't operate by miracles, <laughs> only miracles. 18 year olds are running the whole country the security of the country is in teenagers hands but there's such a thing that we have to do what we're told Hashem says in Baika the Jewish people are to me slaves remember that you were a slave in Egypt and you must guard and perform these mitzvot is there another chair somewhere? Guard and perform these mitzvot. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to hold it here yeah, for tonight. The, there, maybe we should ditch the couch. Yeah. Yeah, we can move the couch back, but we only had it there for Barry, so maybe. <laughs> oh, look at that! Yeah, it's right. Um, uh, Raul, it's on the bookcase over there. Thanks. So to summarize what we said, a person who keeps Torah mitzvot, it's called a tzaddik, he's called a yashar, he's called kosher, he's a kasher. And in general, the idea is that we're doing what we have to do. A tzaddik is not a very high level to reach. I mean, it is hard. Sometimes, you know, when we're... I learn books of halakha. And it's natural that when you learn halakha, you want to... I want to do this opinion, I want to do that opinion, I want to do the third opinion. And I always have to remind myself, you know what I'm Listen to yourself. You first work on being a simple Jew. Pray three times a day on time with kavanah. You make sure that when you put on tefillin, you only think about what you're supposed to think about on tefillin. Make sure that on Shabbat, you keep Shabbat like you should and be happy on it. And make sure that when you eat kosher or everything. Once I reach that level that I'm finished all of that, now I can start worrying about, okay, so which kind of tefillin? And what, but first I have to make sure that I'm, I'm kosher. It's a hard thing to do, to hold yourself down and be disciplined and I have to keep the Torah. But even when you're keeping the Torah, the Rambam is saying, don't run with it. Do what you have to do first. Leave what you don't have to do for the next step. What if you don't ever reach that next step? Nothing happened. You're already a tzaddik. You're already kosher. You're already a yashal. These are big titles. We live in a Judaism, and this is perhaps why we're learning this book before Halakha. We live in a Judaism that if you don't do X, Y, and Z, and X, Y, and Z are all stringencies, then you're not even religious. What do you mean? I keep Torah mitzvot as much as I can. Everything in the Torah we're doing. What Chazal tell us, or Rabbi tell us, we're doing. So some detail that you pulled out of a book 40 years ago, and I, I, I don't do it, and now I'm not religious anymore? Hashem considers me a tzaddik. The Rambam says I'm a tzaddik. You say I don't even keep kosher. You understand what this is? That's Judaism today though. 
because people are, are, are running with, with little things and they don't look inside and say, what is it that Hashem really wants from me? Judaism of champions. <laughs> Judaism of champions. But I, what, I, what I want you to really think about is this is the truth. This is the Judaism that's being sold today on the street. You ever wonder, people ask you, so which denomination are you a part of? Not Orthodox, Reform, Conservative. Are you Chabad? Are you Breslov? Are you Sephardic? Are you Lithuanian? Are you Yeshivish? Are you Modern Orthodox? Are you... Can you ask yourself a question? Why is it that I, I, I'm just Jewish? And what happens when you say I'm Jewish? They laugh at you, huh? Yeah, but really, what are you? I know, I'm really just Jewish. Really, I just try to keep the Torah. And I just try to follow the words of our rabbis. Yeah, but what kind of what kind of chassidut do you belong to? You tell them I'm part of a religion that's 5,775 years old. And you're asking me to join a movement that's only 300 years old. Why would I give up my 5,000 for your 300? I mean, today we're, we're looking at Judaism backwards. We're standing here looking back. But I'm still working on following Rambam and Shulchan Aruch. I didn't get to 100 years ago yet. I didn't get to 30 years ago in Yeshiva University when they started a new movement. I'm not there yet. When I'm there, I'll worry about the details. In nine days, this is the one unifying... We look at how different we are. Oh, those guys dressed like that? I'll tell you now when I was in Bar Park. For the untrained eye, everyone looks the same. They're all Hasidic. They don't realize there's some have this hat, and some have that hat, and some have a fuzzy hat, and some have a felt hat, and some have a strimal, and some have a spudic, and some have a long coat that goes to their ankles, some has a coat that goes to their knees, some have coats that go to their waist, some have pelt in front of their ears, some have pelt behind their ears, some have pelt, you might not know, tied underneath their kippah, some have all kinds of, some have beards like this, some have beards like that, and so <laughs> I, I don't know if that's a religious thing, but uh, but the truth is, we're looking and we say, "Wow, I really I don't know which group am I a part of." We're looking at what's different. What is unifying? We all believe in Hashem. We all believe that the Torah was given to us on Har Sinai. We all believe in the Nevi'im and the Ketuvim, the prophets. We all follow the same Mishnah and the same Talmud. We all observe the same halachot of the Rambam and the Shulchan Aruch. So my jacket is what's going to make me a different Jew than you. That's what's going to break the straw on the camel's back? That's what's going to make us have to be separate from each other? Really? That's how small Judaism has become? You have to fight it, because it's not a valid opinion.